Dear colleagues, this is a intumescent cataract, glaucoma patient and a small arterial chamber. It's done in subconjunct anesthesia and using the cystotome, I start by incising the capsule and uh, aspirate a little bit of that uh, fluffy cortex to release the pressure into the bag. Under uh, irrigation from the AC maintainer, the around uh, capsular axis is uh, fashioned, it's a little bit small on the smaller side, but enough to be able to take out the, the nucleus. Uh, I was um, surprised to see how hard this uh, nucleus was, leathery one. Initially, it didn't appear that uh, tough of a cortex, but after the first um, part of uh, using the FACO probe, I realized how the nucleus uh, will be, and uh, it's like a leathery brown cataract. The FACO probe have a very hard time to chew this uh, leathery brown black type of cataracts, but um, it's a challenge that we can take uh, under FACO mystification also. The only difference is uh, that um, we have to um, repeatedly replace more viscoelastic into the anterior chamber to pl protect the, the cornea. In this case, uh, especially because um, we have a very shallow anterior chamber. And um, having this leathery nucleus uh, into a shallow anterior chamber will uh, force us to do most of the phacomusification inside the bag or at the iris root uh, the most, which is very close to the cornea. Um, the posterior plate of the cataract is very stubborn and the one a crack uh, under repeat uh, separation from the chopper and the um, FACO probe, but we can um, proceed to the FACO mystification uh, using this uh, two instruments to fashion uh, divide and conquer. If we don't uh, succeed with the um, stop and chop technique, we gotta keep on separated small, small, smaller and smaller uh, fragments until we can take it out uh, little by little. The echo emulsification probe uh, is having a hard time to chew these two big chunks of uh, leathery cataracts, so we have to keep um, chopping and make um, the fragments uh, as small as possible in order for uh, the aspiration to work, a vacuum to work more than uh, ultrasound. Through this um, small capsular axis, the, the pieces have a hard time to be taken out, but uh, we need the patience. And um, like I said, repeating uh, the filling of the anterior chamber with the viscoelastic uh, will ensure the clear cornea the next day. So if you can stop and uh, add more viscoelastic throughout the phacomassification, it's always good to protect the cornea. The viscoelastic is cheaper than the 
Vitreosin is cheaper than uh, Cornell Transpa. So it's better to use as much viscoelastic as possible. As the case will uh, need it. We have um, four quadrants, but um, all of them are uh, joined by the posterior uh, plate, which is not uh, yet cracked all the way from one side to another. And um, using the vacuum emulsification to drag one uh, of these pieces uh, into the middle of the pupil. I'm using the chopper to just uh, take it out of the bag and um, chop it in small pieces so uh, the vacuum emulsification uh, will uh, have success successfully emulsified this uh, one quadrant on the periphery and um, the plate that's in the middle uh, is still attached. Partial cracks goes all the way to the posterior plate and then we have um, another quadrant that uh, we are able to safely emulsify it inside the bag and uh, using it in the chopper to just hold it and chop it a little bit more and more. Halfway through the nucleus, one half it's uh, almost done and we have um, the posterior plate from uh, one quadrant and uh, another half of the nucleus still to go which is uh, is good that we have um, it's halfway through the vacuum emulsification and um, having um, bevel down it's easy to um, get the pieces and um, get a hold of them and with the chopper uh, just rotate the other small segment and uh, propagate the, the crack all the way through the posterior plate and in this way we are able to free up another quadrant and uh, slowly emulsify it and uh, chop it and make sure we are uh, on the safe side we can uh, add a little bit more viscoelastic. Feel free to refill the anterior chamber with viscoelastic uh, as much as you feel necessary to ensure a safe uh, vacuum. And uh, in this way, the patient will be happy the next day also. And we're going to be happy that we have a clear cornea. almost done with the third quadrant and uh, that's flipping it on the side and uh, the posterior plate uh, is coming into the FACO needle and it's slowly aspirated. The cataract is like uh, pages of a book uh, or rings of a, of a tree. There are layers and layers added on top of each other so um, we can separate those layers and, and crack it into the smaller pieces and in this way um, 
we are able to have a more efficient uh, chopping. Probably at the end of the vacuum ossification at the last piece should add some more viscoelastic uh, underneath the, the last quadrant not only on the top but underneath the quadrant also to protect the posterior capsule and you will see in a minute uh, why that idea will help will have help in this case also but um, having um, the chopper we can use it to um, not only crack the nucleus and um, do smaller and smaller pieces having more chops uh, but we can also use it to keep it at a lower level of uh, from compared to the FACO tip and hold the posterior capsule in place especially in these elderly patients where um, the cataract is a very old one the, the posterior capsule is very fluctuating I'm changing the tip of the the chopper now with uh, using one with the ball so I can protect the posterior capsule and um, having that uh, small remnant of um, leathery nucleus uh, I'm almost uh, finishing the the FACO massification and in this moment we have uh, something that we didn't plan for but uh, it's a good challenge and it's uh, very easy to manage you can see the PC rent for the last uh, part of the nucleus of the posterior capsule was uh, coming forward and uh, that's when uh, got aspirated into the FACO needle it's no big deal but uh, with the viscoelastic we plugged in the, the PC rent and uh, using the, the chopper I'm uh, rotating and placing the IOL inside the sulcus it's a small capsular axis uh, and that will ensure the IOL good uh, support using um, the aspiration needle with the sailing I'm flashing out the, the viscoelastic using something I'm still on to check the if there's any vitreous, is no, there, is, there is no vitreous inside the anterior chamber. So that's the end of the case. Thank you for your attention.